Okay, Doug. Hello, Sean. How you doing? Great. Okay, so we're talking today about a question most people don't ask until after they've got their house sold and they're about to move. Some people think about it ahead of time. What can I take with me when I sell my house? Yes. And you've got some. I know you've got some interesting stories about yeah. this. But in a nutshell, what can you take with you when you sell your house? Well, um, basically anything you want uh -huh. to take along. And you have to take everything. Um, you, you ha oh, let's put it this way. Let's start back, back. You have to take everything. Unless it has been negotiated that you leave it behind. Or, number two, if it's part of the real estate. So... Let's, okay, what do you mean by part of the real estate? Okay, so let's do a definition of part of the real estate. The uh, Just a simple definition of real estate is anything that's attached to the ground or attached to something that's attached to the ground. So, okay. of course, your house is attached to the ground. Okay. Um, the, um, the shed out back is sitting on, um, on top of the ground, and it's not attached. Uh, the, your 10 by 12 tool shed or your uh -huh. your lawnmower shed or whatever uh -huh. um, your um, your um, <clears throat> workbench in the garage if it's sitting there and you can move it around e e easily move it around um, you can take but if the workbench is bolted to the floor or to the wall that's attached okay so anything that's attached you got to leave so for example microwave if it's sitting on the counter you can take it but really now I mean, when it comes right down to it, um, some of those things are more obvious. I mean, in terms of legal mm -hmm. and stuff, seek you yeah. know a lawyer's advice. But well, pretty much, you know, if it's if it's bolted down, don't take it. Sure, and because most people are gonna think that if it's bolted down, it stays. Yeah, and if yeah, there's gray areas, of course, with anything. Uh, For example, curtains. Uh, um, curtains are not attached, so they can be taken. But the curtain rod is attached, right. to, so that can't be taken. So isn't that kind of a fine line? I can take my curtains, but I can't take the rod that holds the curtains up. It kind of like those are matte sets. So kind of kind of good to spell that out normally <clears throat> in the purchase in the, agreement. In the purchase like if, agreement. You're, yeah. if you're a seller who's really attached to something, you might want to make sure that the buyer agrees in writing <clears throat> that you're going to take that. Like. The yep. washer and dryer or something. Washer and dryer, um, refrigerator and stove. Everybody are, is kind of used to selling the stove and fridge with the with the house, but uh, if those it's not personal. mentioned, those are personal items. If it's not mentioned in the purchase agreement, personal items go. But normally, a buyer, <coughs> if the agent is is <laughs> worth their salt and working with yep. a buyer, they're going to ask for those items in the purchase yeah. agreement, and then at the time of closing, that would show up under uh, cost of, what is it, cost of... Uh, <laughs> Some type of sale, yeah, on the purchase agreement for one dollar. Normally, they do sure. It for $1. It's usually in a personal property. Agenda. Personal property item is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so how let's about go over. Okay, let's go over some other things. How about <laughs> um, how about your um, landscaping outside? Where does that stop? It's really not attached, but then again, it's, it's part, part of, of the, the real land, estate. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> so if you've got favorite plants, um, favorite uh, favorite waterfall or whatever, make sure you. If you're the seller, you let everybody know you're taking that. Or what we've suggested is if you're the seller, before you put your house on the market, if you know you're really attached to something that a buyer might assume that they're getting, yep. just take it out of there before they even get to see it. Because otherwise, normally, like you get a nice waterfall. A buyer thinks he's going to get the nice waterfall and then doesn't finds out he's not going to get the nice waterfall. That's worse than if you would have just yeah. taken and, it out of heaven. Yeah, and so you do have to make a choice. I mean, let's say you have a nice waterfall and it is somewhat removable, but it will help sell the house. My idea would be if it helps sell the house in these days and times, you can recreate another waterfall. Yeah, you can always, yeah. yeah. How much do you really yeah. need to take so, it? Yeah, and so one good example is a chandelier or a nice light fixture that you spent maybe $1,000 or more on above mm -hmm. the dining room table or somewhere else in the house. Mm -hmm. um, there, I would say that's not really gonna help to sell the house that much. Replace it with more of a toned a down, uh, uh, a cheaper model, right. and remove it before you show the house. Because as soon as they see it, they're going to maybe want it. And then if you can't give it up because it's an inheritance, uh, you know, uh, an emotional value yeah. or something. Don't. Here's an example. Uh, we had one where the seller had brought in 
a five ton or two ton, I don't know, a heavy, big, huge boulder and put it out in the middle of the lawn as uh, landscaping. Um, the buyer moves in, the boulder is gone. The sellers <laughs> never asked anybody, never said anything. They just got somebody with a big forklift or something <laughs> yeah. and removed the boulder. Uh, and the buyer kind of was upset. actually expecting the boulder to be there. So that's a, another case. Um, here uh, you go. You've got some really fancy light fixtures on the wall. I mean, uh, light switch covers on the wall. Light switch covers. Now, if you okay. want to take those light switch covers, because for whatever reason, you got to mention that in the purchase agreement and let everybody know those are not included. They'll be replaced mm -hmm. with regular. Because those are screwed into the wall. Yeah, so. those are screwed in. they got to stay unless you tell people you're taking them, and then that's all negotiable, of course. So bottom line, anything that's considered personal property, you can... Um, it, it, unless the buyers ask for it, it, they're yours. And in some cases, if the buyer doesn't ask for it, you have to remove it. It says there's a, most purchase agreements, it says you have to remove every piece of personal property, debris, clutter, whatever. So for example, let's say you've been kind of neglecting that back corner of your lot where all this junk is that you've been piling up. Let's say it's a great big pile of uh, branches and leaves and um, mm -hmm. I don't know, just junk. Well, that has to be removed when you when you sell the property. That's not part of the property. That's considered personal property junk. That and what has it, to go. Right. And what it all comes down to, I think, too, is the buyer is the one who's going to buy your house. So if you're a seller and you want to get your house sold and get money at the closing table, most buyers are going to do a final walkthrough, which is where a lot of these issues that haven't been resolved ahead of time come up. Mm -hmm. The buyer walks through they see the boulder that's missing, they see the junk in the backyard that they thought would have been removed as per the purchase agreement, and it's still there. Yep. Now, the buyer doesn't have to close. No. They can cite, if there's been some type of breach in the contract, some type of breach in that purchase agreement, they'll just cite that, or they might just break the contract and say, no, I don't want to buy the house. Yeah. So and now you, the seller, what good did it do you to think that you could do anything you wanted yeah because it is your house at the time, if you're trying to sell the house, you have to make sure that the other party mm -hmm. who's bringing all the money to the table is agreeable yeah. and happy to move into the so house. So the big thing is if you got a question, check it out with everybody involved in the transaction and make sure everybody knows well in advance what's going to happen and what is not going to happen. And then if, so you can settle, it's, it's you don't, you want to get all questions resolved way before you close. No sense waiting to the very last minute. Can I add one more story that, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. that I've heard Barb tell, which is, you know, uh, a lot of times now what we're writing into the purchase agreements we have been for years is <clears throat> on the buyer side, we'll write in all of these, we would like to have all these things included with the property, you know, all these appliances as viewed on such and such date. Right. Because, you know, like <clears throat> we had one instance where I think where Barb was representing maybe the buyers, was it? And and they went to the final walkthrough, and there was a washer and dryer in the house, but it was like, instead of a modern washer and dryer, it was like a washer and dryer from like 80 years ago. Out of some rental. You know, and the seller's <laughs> perspective was, well, that was my washer and dryer, and the purchase agreement only said a washer and dryer, so I replaced it with mm -hmm. a washer and dryer. Yeah. Well, it didn't matter that it technically meant the purchase agreement requirements. The buyer said, well, I'm not gonna buy this house if you don't put that back or compensate me. Yeah, here's, here's a point um, on like model homes or such, a builder selling his model home. <clears throat> Even though you put the, um, the clause in there, I, I, I want all the appliances that you used in the model home on such and such a date. Um, we've even gone to that conform to these um, serial numbers. Right, write down the actual serial <coughs> numbers, actual which serial is the number. next step to take. Yeah, that, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, especially if it's some really high quality appliances, um, right. And you were expecting those to be there, and all of a sudden it's a slightly different model or something when you move in. Um, that's why you want to make sure you, uh, on, and this is not in every case, but this would just be in, in very uh, few cases. But I mean, it, why, it, not? It's, why, not yeah, why not do that? And uh, I think that's about it, other than um, just make sure you have it all. If it's personal property and the buyer wants it, number one, the buyer includes it on the purchase agreement. And you as a seller, that's okay, that's fine. Or if you're excluding things as a seller, you make sure that's in the purchase agreement. I'm excluding this, I'm excluding that. Uh, you know, the workbench it's attached, I'm excluding. And the, most buyers yeah. understand the specialty right. items that a hand carves something or other, you're excluding that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, probably the buyer wouldn't want it anyway, or they understand that yeah. if, they, if they were in that situation. Huh? 
So that's kind of in a nutshell what we call personal property versus real estate in a purchase agreement. And um, it's something just to uh, make sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed and when it comes to these items. Which is part of why you have an agent. Help you on both sides. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks, Doug. Appreciate you it. Bet, John. Okay, thanks.